Thank you for having me. I am a principal software engineering manager within Microsoft here to talk to you about Woke, the inclusive winter. Um, we already had a little bit of context about me. I recently relocated to London to help build out our teams in EMEA, as well as be with my partner who ditched me from New York and moved to London a couple of months ago. Um, I also previously served as a community lead at Women Who Code, uh, so I certainly understand the amount of effort that goes into virtual conferences. So thank you all, all the facilitators, and thanks for having me here today. Ultimately, I am passionate about building out inclusive teams, and I'm here to chat with you about an inclusive linting tool um, that we started to leverage within our own teams at Microsoft to promote inclusive documentation and code. So between customer engagements, we generally look for open source projects that we can contribute to that drive impact uh, to the larger engineering community. We came across this open source linter called Woke, used to detect non-inclusive language in your source code. While I certainly can't take credit for coming up with Woke, I had the pleasure of an opportunity to contribute to the open source tool um, and take this linter into our own engineering processes. My hope is at the end of this presentation, you too will look into the linter, ways you can contribute and ultimately leverage in your own engineering processes on your teams. Before we dive into the inclusive linter, setting a little context here, why it is important to leverage a linter like Woke uh, is that words truly matter. Um, and we definitely need to be conscious of the unintended impact that words make on those around us, uh, to our colleagues and to our end users of our solutions. Um, the smallest changes in language can make someone feel more welcome from the start. Um, I've personally been there. I've been in a room where somebody addresses the room as, hey guys, and then calls out, oh, and there's a girl here too. Um, I immediately felt called out, a little uncomfortable, and felt like it was unnecessary. Um, even in casual conversations, assuming the gender of your partner, for example, um, we've all been there. Uh, and I can even give a concrete example. Two weeks ago, we were on my internal team talking about our brown bag sessions where we generally share and explore learnings. And a new teammate of mine immediate, immediately called out and said, hey, um, can we use a more inclusive langu language surrounding brown bags? Um, and all of us were a little bit stumped. We did not know that brown bags um, had derogatory language involved. Um, and as it turns out, brown bags in African-American culture was used as a test. Uh, slave owners generally kept um, lighter skinned slaves inside and they would use a brown bag to detect whether or not you were lighter or darker than the brown bag. Um, in all of these concrete examples, I'm here to share that words really do matter and they have direct and indirect impacts on the people who hear and because we're talking about documentation here, who read them. Ultimately, with inclusive language, we need to be open and willing to learn. Um, it's the impact of these words, not the intent that matters. And when you have control in your choice of words or your choice of words as you're documenting or writing code, here to share that we should definitely choose widely, wisely. Um, inclusive language has been defined as language to design avoiding excluding people on the basis of gender, sexual preference, age, race, ability. Um, it, the main goal behind inclusive language is to avoid offensive language and aim for social justice. Before we dive into the actual intro itself, I definitely wanted to overview some certain categories of inclusive language. There is language that is gendered, gendered language generally, uh, examples like she, hers, any sort of pronouns using they, them, their, uh, guys referring to a group. Um, in my previous example, you can use more gender neutral terms like folks. Other examples, manpower, wives, husbands, boyfriend, girlfriends, using gender um, agnostic language generally helps. Um, there's also categories of ableism and ageism. Um, ageism is generally where you're either making somebody feel even older or even younger in a, in a not very nice way, um, like grandfather, grandfathering. Um, and ableism is also examples of making handicapped. So handicapped or persons with disabilities, deaf person with hearing disability. Um, and in terms of engineering language, this generally falls under socially charged language, right? So conventional terms that we use that we don't even realize have are socially charged. 
like master branch becoming main branch or master slave when we're talking about nodes um, or environments, you can rename them to primary or standby instead. Um, typical other engineering, uh, non-inclusive language, whitelist, blacklist, um, generally speaking, um, socially charged language finds its way into our vocabulary all of the time, and we need to be more conscious of the terms that we use. A uh, final category I wanted to share with you all is kind of violent language. Um, you'd be surprised how much this is used in some documentation in code. Um, things like crushing it, killing it. Um, there's better ways of saying that, uh, like elevating or exceeding expectations. Um, so it's so easy for us to use outdated terms that are non-inclusive, um, but it's certainly uh, we need to be more conscious with documentation and code because this documentation and code lives on forever and it can be shared with many others. So now let's talk about woke. Um, I had the opportunity to work with the maintainer, Caitlin, on this project um, and dive in to her backlog and figure out places where our team could contribute. Woke is an open source linter. So much like a Microsoft Word doc that is scanning your doc for misspelling of words, this linter is essentially doing the same thing, except it's looking for non-inclusive language. My team and I not only enjoyed upskilling in Golang, the language that the linter is uh, using, but we also enjoyed exploring the various different ecosystems provided. There are woke actions that can be incorporated into CI CD pipelines. And there's also a VS Code extension that you can enable in woke. Um, I will demonstrate all of the different ways you can use woke uh, and hope that will be more clear. Uh, but as a whole, not only did my team learn Go and a new language and create a collaboration model for how to contribute to open source software, uh, but I also felt like we had our own learning journey, this time in the English language through a more inclusive lens. Uh, and I hope that becomes more and more evident as I demonstrate some of the work that we did. Ultimately, though, we find that Woke is a very flexible tool that can be re reused across multiple teams and multiple organizations. So my hope is that as I'm presenting, you can start brainstorming different ways that your team can leverage this tool in some of your engineering processes. Before we dive into the demo on Woke, I did want to set some concepts. Uh, so Woke uses this idea of a rule set. Think about a rule set as the defined terms that we're going to lint for. The cool part about Woke is that you have the ability to build out your own rule set based on a predefined schema. The great part about rule sets is that they are highly configurable, they're applied at runtime, and you can store them both locally and in GitHub. So what exactly does a rule set look like? A rule set is essentially a YAML file uh, where you can define the terms to lint for. Uh, here is a concrete example of the term guys. The name of this rule is called guys. The terms you can define as guys or singular, plural, and or synonyms for this term. Uh, so very flexible in terms of how you build out this rule set. There also is a key for alternatives. So instead of using guys, the tool will suggest the alternative. And here's where you'll build out alternative language, such as folks, people, you all, y'all. Woke rule sets also have a key for severity. This becomes important when you are incorporating CI CD processes. Um, setting a severity of error can fail your PR if you wish. Um, and there are multiple different levels of severity there, similar to kind of logging severity. Uh, and finally, uh, I, myself and the team built out the options category, and this allows you to kind of plug and play different categories. Uh, so for example, this guys falls under gendered language, so it's in the gendered category. Um, and at the top of your rule set, you can plug and play different categories to include or exclude them as you wish. Um, that will become more clear as I go into the demo, uh, but it's just demonstrating outright uh, that they are very highly configurable in terms of how you plug and play your rule sets. Now, what is happening behind the scenes when you use Woke? Uh, there are two different things happening. One, the maintainer has provided a default rule set to get you started. I will show you this in the source code. 
The maintainer defined it from Twitter's use of Twitter's defined use of non-inclusive language, uh, part of that source code. So it's a good place to get going. On top of the default rule set, you all have the ability, as I've stated, to build out custom rule sets. Um, this is great because you can start with the default and you can continue to grow your own rule set for your own team um, as you see fit. Great part about the custom rule sets is that they can live locally on your machine. Um, and I also work to build out a feature that allows you to pull them in from GitHub. Ultimately, at runtime, Woke is taking the combination of terms in the default rule set, the combination of terms in your custom rule set, and conceptually applying them to a final rule set to lint against. Now we're going to go ahead and dive into Woke and the various ways you can leverage Woke. Uh, the maintainer has provided an ecosystem and is certainly encouraging of building out this ecosystem. Uh, first and foremost, there is the source code, um, which you can download and just run command line. The second way you can leverage Woke is within a VS code extension. This is great for catching non-inclusive language on the fly as you're documenting in your markdowns or writing your code. And the final way that is available in the ecosystem is get actions and get actions run during your PR or however you define the get action. There are two different woke actions defined. The one uh, simply just uses woke on pull requests. And the second, which I'll demonstrate, uses woke in combination of review dog, which allows for more custom behavior with PRs. Let's go ahead and dive into the source code and give you a demo of how we can go about leveraging this tool. First and foremost, uh, the Woke ecosystem page, there is a lot of documentation. Feel free to check it out um, following this conference. Um, and we can go ahead and dive into the source code. Um, here we have the source code. And if you go into the package, you will find that default rule set that I was describing. Again, this default rule set is based off of Twitter's um, non-inclusive language. And you'll see examples like whitelist, blacklist, master, slave, slave, grandfathered, a lot of outdated non-inclusive engineering terminology to get you started. How do you go about actually leveraging woke? So here I am in my IDE. And I pretty much only have two things happening. I have a folder called demo with bad text. This text contains a lot of non-inclusive language. Woke lints for uh, whatever directory that you are in um, across all of your documentation and code. Uh, so here I am in my demo folder. On top of that, I have a categories rule set. This is a custom rule set that I built out to demonstrate some of the capabilities that my team built out. Um, this rule set will go on top of the default rule set as you'll see in the demo. These rules include ableist, violent, as well as additional gendered terminology. You'll see that each term is associated with a category um, and there's a number of different categories demonstrated here uh, as well as like a violent category and some more gendered language. What I was mentioning before is that at the top of your rule set, you can plug and play your categories. In this example, I'm going to exclude ableist terms, which means my end rule set should be the default rule set the maintainer provided, as well as the violent and additional gendered language that I added to my rule set. I'm gonna go ahead and run this and I hope everyone can kind of see it. Uh, very simply, I'm on a Mac, you can brew install Woke um, very quickly. Um, and then another great thing you can do is point it to the actual GitHub. So this rule set not only lives locally, uh, but I also have it in a GitHub repository. So here, when I go to run Woke, I simply call Woke-C, dash C sets the custom configuration you can pass the URL or you can pass simply the point to the rule set locally itself. And for the purposes of the demo, I'm gonna set it in debug mode so we can kind of see what is happening behind the scene. Um, let me pull this up and maybe zoom in a little bit more so folks can see. Um, okay, so here I did woke-c categories rule set. 
Um, we're essentially grabbing that custom rule set, we're loading it into the config, and then we build out the rules that we'll actually lint for. Um, you'll see here that we're excluding categories of ableist because that is how I defined my categories rule set. So it's excluding every single term that has the category ableist. And then it enables the rest of the default rules in addition to some of those violent terminologies and additional gendered terminologies. What happens at the end? You'll see Woke doing its work and detecting that non-inclusive language. Um, it in command line says, don't use the word dummy. Dummy is insensitive. Use a placeholder sample instead. And these are coming directly from that custom rule set where you define the alternative language to use. Um, you know, in another sentence in my bad dot text, equipment installation takes 16 man hours to complete. Woke lints for it and detects this as an error and says, man hours are insensitive. Use person hours, engineering hours instead. And the classic, you guys may be insensitive, rather use folks or you all instead. Uh, in a very concrete example that could be in anyone's documentation, you guys should try this tutorial before writing your code. Ultimately detecting your non-inclusive language based on how you configure your various rule sets. One of the other great applications of Woke is a VS Code extension. So you can go ahead and search for the VS Code extension, um, and you can go ahead and enable it in your workspace. What does this do? This allows you to detect non-inclusive language based on your rule sets on the fly. So while you are typing your documentation or code, Woke is continuously linting. You can configure it to lint on save, lint on type, like any sort of other linter you've used in your IDE. Um, and here you'll see similar output from Woke. Dummy may be insensitive, use placeholder sample instead. Again, this is great because it's catching that non-inclusive language before you even commit your documentation or code into your repository. Moving onwards to the last example of how you can leverage Woke in your engineering processes is in CI and CD pipelining. So in a very concrete example, I am creating a pull request of trying to merge this bad text file into my repository. I'm going to leverage the woke get action review doc and configure it to lint once I submit this PR. What does this actually look like? Here I've configured my GitHub workflow. Um, I'm calling it woke data dog YAML. And on pull requests, we are going to leverage the provided woke action review dog. And there's a couple of different ways you can configure this. Primarily, the reporter allows GitHub PR review, which essentially allows you to comment on your PR. You'll see what this looks like in a second. Um, there's also enabling on failure. So if it detects that error, you can fail the PR in essence saying you cannot merge this until all of your non-inclusive language is removed. Um, and then you can also add in woke arguments directly into the get action. And here is where you can either set the version of woke or set woke arguments such as the configuration. Yes, so as I stated, um, here you're using the actual woke action review dog. Review dog allows comments on PRs. Um, and you can configure Woke in the same way by passing in the various Woke arguments provided in the documentation. I demonstrated just setting a custom rule set, but there's another, other, another arguments you can pass in as well. What does this look like in reality? Let me zoom out a little bit. Um, so here I submitted a pull request of my bad.txt file into my main branch, which fires off this get action. The way I configured the get action allows review dog to report and comment on the PR. So once I submit the PR, you'll see Woke doing the same exact linting, uh, just in a different way. So here we see again, dummy is insensitive, use placeholder sample instead. Um, so throughout the PR, it's scanning that bad.txt file, commenting where it sees that non-inclusive language, and because I configured the PR to fail upon 
these errors. And I also configured these terms to have severity of error. Um, ultimately, the PR fails and you're not able to merge the code in until you fix all of your non-inclusive language. The maintainer also provided a get action that simply just uses woke. This will run in your CI CD pipeline, much like other linters do, and it will not comment on your PR request. So feel free to leverage either get action depending on your exact scenario. Now that we've gone through the demo, the various ways that you can leverage woke to lint your documentation and code. My call to action uh, would be to check out the source code, check out the entire ecosystem. Generally speaking, the maintainer is super receptive and excited to contributors. And my organization has found that it is highly configurable and can be used across many different teams. A concrete example of this is we both had a rule set to you extend the non-inclusive language beyond the default rule set. Uh, but we also had another rule set that we used to lint for customer language to make sure our solution was very agnostic. This is specific to my organization, but I share that with you all to start brainstorming the various ways you can use Woke in your organization. Um, I hope you do find that as you go to build out your own custom rule set for your team, that you too will have an inclusive language journey and learn more and more about non-inclusive language and how you can prevent that from ending up in your documentation and code. Um, as humans, as coworkers, we can all make a more concerted effort to use inclusive language, uh, but we can also leverage tools that help us out like Woke. We have provided some guidance around inclusive linting in our Microsoft Commercial Software Engineering Playbook which I'll share with you all. Uh, you can scan this QR code in the right. It will give an overview of Woke and how to set up some of your CI CD pipelines. Um, and of course, I encourage you all to connect with me on LinkedIn. Feel free to reach out. I really appreciate uh, being here and very excited to share with you this tool and uh, wish you all a good evening or good afternoon, uh, wherever you are in the world. Thank you. Thank you. So in the meanwhile, we were uh, having some humor in the chat. I guess you get this a lot. This must be really hard, like advocating for something so nuanced and then, you know, you yeah. make a tiny, tiny mistake and then, wow. <laughs> do, do you actually experience that a lot? Like advocating for um, something within such a big enterprise and then um, you being immediately under the microscope? Is there, a way to, is there a way to go around this? That when um, one tries to bring in linting for language that might sensitize uh, some long toes, uh, so not the extreme violence, but um, I don't know. I'm not a native speaker and I didn't even realize the word mankind would be an issue until I looked at like, okay, man, mankind. Da -da. Because for non-native speakers, words are words. I mean, if we imagine how how we wouldn't feel um, a language on the other side of the globe, I, this immediately becomes understandable that some words you just don't feel. You learn them. That's what it means, period. And if you learned it 20 years ago, then that's that. Exactly. Um, exactly. How do you go around this to not to be um, to not to become the target of resistance? Yeah, personally? that's that's a great question. I found that in inclusive language journey and uh, now with the opportunity of working with people in London from all over, right, with many different cultural contexts, backgrounds, I think you, I tend to approach, I like to approach people with the understanding that you might not necessarily have that context, right? And you're always going to be learning on your inclusive language journey. I think if you can approach everyone with this mindset uh, and understand that everyone is doing their best um, and be open-minded to being corrected, I think that goes a long way. Mm -hmm. um, is the um, 
Vogue project, uh, is, is it used within the initiative, inclusive naming initiative, or the other way around? The inclusive naming? Mm -hmm. Sorry. Uh, somebody from the audience uh, was asking, um, about a month ago, we had a presentation about the inclusive naming initiative. Is Vogue being used within that or the other way around? I'm not, I'm not certain. That's a great question. Mm -hmm. And Shelly is saying she's inst installing the VS Code extension right now. <laughs> oh yeah. So um, that was advocate question. Uh, don't you think using the name Vogue could be itself polarizing? <laughs> yes, and if you read on the documentation, the maintainer provided context as to why she named it Vogue. Um, ultimately, it's to awaken everyone's inclusive language journey. Um, but yeah, that was, I think, the idea behind how it's being named. Could be that a vacant was taken or it would come up in the wrong context. Another question. Looks awesome. I'm glad to see there are both active and closed issues on the GitHub. What kind of contributors are you looking for? Honestly, uh, from my experience working with the maintainer, She's very open-minded into who can contribute. Um, one approach I would recommend is my team and I went in and we pretty much looked at the backlog and upskilled in Go and understanding the tool itself and then started to collaborate with her on areas of improvement. Um, so if you are have never programmed in Go, uh, take it from my own experience. You can certainly upscale and learn and contribute. That was my experience. And the maintainer is really receptive. If you have ideas for how to build out the ecosystem or add features to the tool, um, she's very much receptive comments and provides some sort of guidance requirements uh, to help you implement. So mm -hmm. at any level, I think you can contribute to the tool itself. Mm -hmm. While we're reading, if there's other questions from the audience, when you're onboarding um, uh, junior colleagues, so not experienced colleagues, but colleagues who are learning uh, the art at the moment, what is what is the point where you introduce them to this, to even be aware of this? I mean, it's it's always too late, but then there's also such a thing as too much information. Yeah, no, that's totally fair. Um, honestly, we've we've used it and brought it to like internal. DNI summits to get more and more teams exposed to it. Um, but typically, when we go to start a new customer project, um, we look into adding the inclusive linter into our either dev container uh, or our CI CD pipelining. Um, and part of the experience has also been sharing with customers that this is mm -hmm. part of our process. Um, so, in terms of evangelization of the tool, there's really no bad time to start. You can start right from the get-go. Um, it's quite simple to actually use. Um, it's more so understanding how it works in the background and or defining a custom rule set yourself for your team or organization. Um, and part of building out that rule set can also be a good learning exercise in inclusive language itself. Mm -hmm. Is there a word that often comes up that you wonder, like, why don't people feel that this is a problem? <laughs> that is so, so accepted, so part of our everyday language. Yeah, yeah. I think it's it's easy to get frustrated when, you know, you're trying to drive for more inclusive language and you feel like you're trying to get everyone to wrap their brains around it. Um, but I ultimately battle the frustration with, again, trying to... Uh, understand everyone is on a different journey or on a different path in their inclusive language journey. Some folks might have just started today. This is a new terminology for them, or they have cultural or language barrier differences, right? And other folks might be further along. And I think it's approaching people with that understanding um, that kind of helps combat the frustration. Mm -hmm. That it's not correcting, but learning. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Um, thank you for the presentation and good luck in London. Thank you. And see you later.